Okay, so the plan is, no, I think it might be getting kind of late in the year for these mud tires. So the tires that were on this quad are total garbage. So I think I m might even put the tires from my quad on here for a while. Because these things, all they do is get mud, mud and manure stuck to them. And then it just throws mud around everywhere. And even with these flaps, still kicks mud up. So that's just what they do. They kick mud up. So probably about time to put the, uh, the tires. But I, I've been working on my trail full time. So I don't have my tripod. I don't want to keep bringing it in and out. So this video is going to be very boring. And so I, we need a fencing trailer. So we need a trailer with all the fence fixing tools in it and a box. So room for this doesn't need, like stuff like that doesn't need to be in here. So that would go. And I need to build a new gate for it, tailgate. This is like a mini pickup truck, this trailer. So I, that's, I, and this is old too. My uncle got that from Canadian Tire years, like 30 years ago. And it still works and there's nothing wrong with it. Well, the, the wood is garbage, it needs new wood. But this, this is actually not a bad trailer. You know, the, the wheels are in the right place. It has leaf springs, so if you put a big load in it, they'd probably work, but those leaf springs aren't tuned right. They're too stiff, so if you, they're meant for a big load. But if you put... You know, it's not a bad design of trailer, actually. I'd say maybe this could be... The wheels could be just a little bit... No, I think they're in the right place. The wheels are in the right place. The hitch maybe could be just a touch shorter. But... So what I want to do is I'm going to mount this box down with like a... I don't know, a chain or something. And then I want to have it so that you can have all the fence tools in here. All the, you know, endless supplies of nails and insulators. Hey, so now the tailgate has to be made. And we didn't buy that. We got that for free. There's a, um, like our friend works at a plywood place. And they just give away perfectly good plywood. Like this, square pieces. Sometimes they're not square, but. So if you want plywood and you don't want to pay for it, go to, I don't know what the place is called, but it's a, they build frames for houses or something. So if you go there, they usually get all the bins of plywood. They, you know, that's perfect right there. That You know, it's warped a bit, but you could totally use that for whatever you needed to. And we have a bunch of that stuff. So that's good. I'm going to cut the tailgate. I couldn't really find anything else. And if I use this, this is the, this is kind of weak and thin. That's a bit, not the best. And then that one is, that's a bit thick. I'll see if that's for something else. It needs to be strong. This stuff is about the, about the right thickness. I mean, this is a different kind of plywood. It's not as strong. This stuff is better. So I'll make it like just a little bit higher just because I think that's a good way to do it. And the hinges need to be welded to the, they need to be welded to the, this frame here because they're just loose and there's holes there. So, yeah. And then I'm going to cut cut it here and cut it there with a circular saw. Okay, so I'm going to weld these hinges on there. It's a, I think that's a 30... It's a 13 or... Six, 1360 or whatever rod that is. Okay, so the tailgate's on and then... This piece was actually on here, but see, they just broke off. So I think I'm gonna put that on there like that. And I'll drill new holes, I think. And that should be fine. And then, and then this chain, you know, that'll get moved. And, and then this will, the chain, you know, it'll be up here. And then this chain will go on there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is cut these two pieces and then drill some holes in the wood and the steel. And I'm going to make a new kind of extension because it's uh, there's too much wood missing. Like there's a chunk of wood missing there and the, so the metal will give it more length. So it'll have more wood to stick to. 
So I decided I'm just gonna weld these two pieces of metal together. And one of them's pretty thin, but we have some really small rods or tack welder. But normally I'd wanna use this welder for small stuff, but it needs a new one of these cables. Okay, this piece is welded up. I tacked it on this side and welded it solid and it's not overlapping. It's, what do they call that? A butt joint, I think. I actually haven't done one of those yet. Because I've hardly ever needed to, but yeah. I did I think I did a good job on that. That's strong enough. Right. And also I used a really weird type of rod. I think it's a I can't even read that, but it's a brown it's a really nice rod. They're really old too, they've been sitting for years, a bunch of them right there. These brown Oh, 73 something or 7013 no 7313 or whatever that is the weird type of, uh, these guys are barking at birds now the birds are a problem they they crap on all of our stuff so the birds shouldn't be in here this is welded up and I made this for that which way does it go it goes this way. So I need that to go there. So that there's more. So that there's more wood to get to. So this will be closed. So closed like that. Yeah, that's really nice. There's a piece of metal on here now. And then there's a lot of wood to put bolts through. There's a lot of material to work with. This is nice and straight. It's not going back like that. That's a good fix right there. Until I, I just have to fill the holes. And then on this side, this piece goes on there. Like that. And I think there's still a decent amount of wood here attach that too just drill like a few more holes really i could have sh should have done the same thing i should have made an extension on this side as well but i think that's okay this you know, if i put like three more holes here that should be fine it's not really doing much either this one's good well i think we are done so I made a, I put a chain on here, I replaced, I got a hook here to hold this chain on. It's not the best system, but it does work. And then another hook on this side. It's strong, but it's not exactly precise. And then I, I put this angle iron on here and this is really nice because it wanted to break here. So now I can stand on it. And that's way stronger with this angle iron on here so i got chains on here drilled holes in the wood new holes and put bolts and i was i should actually one more thing i should do is cut these off because they're annoying and i welded this is the piece i welded together that looks like it worked really well and now this is like one piece now This is like a truck gate now. Really old fashioned truck gate. And I took the hinges off and pounded them and welded them. Pounded, kind of did some body work on the hinges. Welded the hinges on the frame. And uh, use lots of washers, bigger washers. When you're doing wood with a bolt, use bigger washers. And some of them have two on there. So that's like that. So this is. That's done well, and then the uh, box is ratchet strapped on, and these ratchet, ratchet straps, they're brand new, but these are garbage. These are terrible. It's an awful design. It's so hard to figure out how to use them, and uh, those are terrible. But this, and then there's an old one here. Hold this on. This is like a little pickup truck now. You got to... Or whatever box you call that and then you got space in the back okay well now everything that should be needed 
for fixing any barbed wire or electric fences in here. So this still still works. I'll put it that way because it's a it's a 1995. It's a pretty old pretty old chainsaw. The chain brake is busted off, but I it didn't have any fuel in the tank, and I just put fuel in it, revved it up, and it didn't sputter or anything. The carburetor's in perfect shape, so I was not expecting that good of a result. And then this is the wrong. This is not pull cable, but it's not bad. The pull starter I think should be replaced on this. It, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it see how it doesn't work half the time. So the, Needs a new pull starter, I think. Okay, so now it ha we have pickets for gates, barbed wire for fixing fences, and I think so it's probably about a day or two after setting this trailer up, and now I need to use it to go fix a gate. So let's put it on the quad. Look at this. That's a gutter snake. These are good snakes, they're not poisonous. He's a Rocky back. Yeah, he doesn't even know it's right there. Yeah, there's a snake. Snake right there. These snakes are harmless. They I when you I've tried to catch them before. Um, and you gotta catch them by the neck because, or, or like a, right around the neck because they, they have a, uh, like a stinky smell, a spray or whatever it is. They, they rub themselves in it. And your hands smell bad, so. If it, it's fun to catch them, but not when they spray all over you, so. They don't spray it, they just rub themselves in like a foul smelling oil or something. That's a, that's a garter snake. These are the types of, and they're not poisonous, and they do try to bite your finger sometimes, but it doesn't hurt. And they don't have sharp teeth, they're pretty harmless. So these are safe snakes to catch, other than the terrible smell they put on them. But yeah, these are good snakes. These are the types of snakes that eat, eat spiders and bugs and all the other pesty stuff. I think sometimes if they're big enough, they'll eat shrews. But, you know, that's a that's a pretty small snake there. Rocky's right here. He doesn't even know it's there. I'm trying to hide. Yeah, that's a gutter snake. Okay, so this is the gate that needs fixing. I think this gate should probably have a... I think it actually did have another picket. But he, this is what happens when you use... You know, pine is a free way to get pickets, but they, if you use your skinny ones, they're no good. But also the, uh, you know, the, the pine pickets versus these, I don't know what wood these are, but these are treated and they're hard. And so the fence nails stay in them, the horseshoe nails, these they stay in there. So these wooden ones aren't the best. So th this gate needs a rebuild. It's pretty much fine. The end picket is kind of a more difficult thing to replace. I don't think I'm going to. It looks very strong and really nothing wrong with it. This wire is a little too high. I'll maybe lower that a little bit. But other than that, that's, that's fine. So all this gate needs is a couple of new pickets and to move that wire. So I got quad in there. And this quad, I, I actually don't really use it that much. It's mainly my mom and uncle. And sadly, the transmission is definitely going. It definitely feels wrong driving this. It has a problem in there. It's wearing out. So 
I and this is a tw 2013. 90s the 90s quad still beat the 2013. So I would only recommend the 90s quad. They did weird stuff with the designing of them after that. You know, even the early 2000s, I don't totally trust. This hitch, I kind of rebuilt it. I had the bottom piece under here. It was lower, and then I just made a contraption to, out of stuff to make that work. It's supposed to be in the middle, but it's hard to tell. But that quad, uh, my quad's going to outlast this thing, even though it's double the age. Or, I don't know if it's double the age. But this trailer is not bad, though. I like that. You know, I have all the stuff in here, and then... Leaf springs and stuff. So now let's actually use this trailer and get a couple of, so probably three new pickets on this gate. The first gate I ever fixed was actually over there at the end of the field there. I said this one was at the end, but this is actually the corner. pretty broken so it's not like I have to take every French staple out or nail. They look more like staples but that's what this tools are for. This is that one. This one's in pretty good shape. I could use that again. Once you get the nails in a certain amount, then you can move the barbed wire around and adjust it a lot. The wire about that long from the bottom. You just want to kind of space them evenly. So usually the bottom, make it about like that. And if you wanted this to be perfectly precise, you could measure it. But I find that's just a waste of time. And work. The barbed wire kind of goes weird anyway. about a foot or whatever length that it looks like it is. Now that this picket's on, I can stand it up and kind of guess where to go from there. And some pickets, you want it to touch the ground. Other times, you know, sometimes it should touch the ground. But, see this wire here is a little bit too high. So this wire should be down just a bit. A 
really should wear gloves for this part, but it doesn't really matter. If you're doing a, a lot of barbed wire work all day long, gloves is a good idea. But this is just one gate I'm fixing. That's pretty much all it needs. That's a, that's a bit tighter. Better. Top one could be a little tighter too. Could, I could replace that, but that's still working fine. And usually these things only break if you drive a snowmobile over them or if a cow jumps through it. And this is a wide open pasture, so it's a lot less likely a cow is going to get spooked and jump through it. But the one mistake I made is when I had it lying on the ground, I straightened it because it looked crooked on the ground. But you, when you straighten it before you put the nails in straighten it well up and then when you lie it down to pound them all the way in leave it don't try to straighten it on the ground because they are straight up but they're not straight on the ground and then I tried to straighten them on the ground and then they ended up like that that's the one mistake I made but it still works fine it's uh, you know if you really wanted it to look perfect you could change that but the function of it is perfectly fine and uh, these little trees, these are a problem. These are, they get big and then they grow to your fences. So little trees like this, just get rid of those. Just bend them over, break them. Because these, when these start growing, if you let them get too big, they just grow. The fence, well, the fences are so old, they last long enough for trees to get, you know, like as big as this post and bigger. The trees are growing near the fence. I'll just do that because these are going to grow in and then it's going to start to spread and grow in the field. And just not good. Really, you have a brush cutter or something. But these are tender. I just break them over. Especially under the fence wire, too. Just break those over. Lots of them. Like this one was broke. And it grew back. And I need a tractor to clear some more trees off the fence. But my perfection is gates. I'm not really a, into fencing, but I probably should get more into fencing because if uh, the fences break more than the gates do, these trees are right near the fence. That's why you want to get rid of that. And we don't believe in using Roundup because that's poisonous and it's a big job and have to mix it, it's a problem. So a brush cutter is the way to go. Roundup just kills, see what Roundup does? It kills everything and then you get a whole bunch of dry grass and if there's electricity going through here, that's almost, you know, this is not a, an electric fence, but if it were to be, if it were to be, then you'd catch stuff on fire and then you'd get a wildfire. So. The way to cut these is with a brush cutter, because, I mean, yeah, some people use Roundup, but Roundup's super expensive, too. So if you're, you're paying way less for a brush cutter that you buy once, like a little hand, it looks like a weed whacker, but it's a brush cutter. You're paying less for one of those brand new and for 10 years of gas than for 
tank of Roundup to go on the quad, I think. Because the Roundup is expensive and it it gets the job done, but then they start, trees just start growing in it again. So Roundup isn't the way to go. It doesn't work. I mean, it kind of works, but not. it's not efficient for the price you have to pay for it. And then there is a tightener to help you tighten it more just to get it in the loop. But this gate doesn't need it, so I'm not going to fix that. But this gate is fixed.